Hey guys, Tom here. Today I'm just going to show you real quick a painting project. Now, since everybody's on lockdown, it seems like everybody's taking care of projects around the home because they got nothing else to do. And judging by the lines at the paint counter at the home center, painting is a big project that everybody would like to get done. I'm going to paint this relatively small entryway at our house. So I thought I'd just give you a quick painting 101 for those who would like to get a paint project done but aren't really sure how to go about it. A kind of a painting primer, if you will. Now, hopefully you're all ready to paint. You have your tools together and your walls are all prepped. If you haven't done that already, make sure you watch the first part of this series where I go over paint tools and prep to get started. Now you just have to dump your paint into your paint tray and your work pot. Don't fill your work pot up too much because that'll just make your brush into a sloppy mess. Now, as you're ready to cut in, what you do is you load your brush and then you lay it out on the wall. Now you notice I'm using the brush flat. Don't turn a brush sideways because you're defeating the purpose of having a big brush. You're turning a three inch brush into basically a half inch brush. Just lay the brush on the wall, flatten it out, and then sneak up on the corner. Okay, so you can see cutting in is real easy. Now, another thing I'm gonna tell you, when you're loading your brush, you're not dunking the brush. If you can see that, I'll try to zoom in for you, but there's only about half to three quarters of an inch of paint on that brush. You dump it in and you don't scrape on the side. You, you dip a little bit. I have maybe an inch of paint in this work pot here. You dip and you pat it on the inside of the paint can. Why would you put one to load paint on there and then wipe it all off? You want paint on there. Actually, more paint is going to give you a cleaner edge than less paint. You think it's counterintuitive, but it's not. Because you're going to get a nice, once you get a little adept with your brush, you're going to get a nice flow of paint and it'll flow right where you want it to be. And another thing, when you're cutting in, you always work dry to wet. So like I, I started over here and then I'm working this way, always dry to wet. So then I just finish in this corner here. And then I'm going down. Okay, and if I'm working by myself, I generally do one wall at a time. If you're working with a partner, one person can cut in and the other per person can just come behind you and roll at the same time. But this is kind of a small space. There's really only room for one person to work. So that's me today. And when you're painting and you can start hearing the brush go, that means you need more paint. That doesn't mean press harder. So I actually got a little paint on the baseboard here. So a little trick is you get your five or a putty knife and you can just clean off right on top there. Like I said, generally I just clean stuff up with my finger and wipe it on my shirt. I'm not painting the baseboards today, but if I were, um, I would tell you, I would actually, I prefer when I'm painting a lot of times to paint the trim first because it's easier to cut in around the trim than it is to cut in the trim around the wall, if you know what I mean. And I'll show you when we get to a door. Now the same principle applies for the top of the ceiling as it does for the bottom, like around this baseboard heater. You just flatten out your brush and you sneak up on the edge that you're trying to, you can see me here flatten out, get the paint on the wall, and then I flatten out the brush and press it into the corner. And you're going to get a nice clean edge. Now, in the time that it took me to cut in this one wall, which doesn't, wasn't more than about five minutes, it probably would have taken me 15 to tape this all out.
So now it's time to roll. So like I said, half inch snap roller, not a three eighths. And it's very simple. You just load up your roller. You just kind of cheat it in. You roll from the back and just kind of cheat into the paint. You don't, you don't want to like dunk your roller into the whole tray because then you'll make a sloppy mess. And you're just trying to load the outside of the roller, not the whole, you don't want to get it in the gears and stuff. So the, actually the first roll is not going to be great because you're really just trying to load the roller at this point. You're not so much trying to paint the wall because you'll go back and fill in after. And you'll know when you have enough on there because it looks like it's loaded. It's got good coverage on the roller. It looks wet. So to the wall, a lot of people say you make a W or an M or whatever, but you just kind of want to evenly unload the roller and you always try to lead with the with the frame part so then you just kind of go back and forth if you need be it's a tall wall use a pole this is not a tall wall but I'm a tall person so I don't need a pole See, so you can see that didn't go far my and my you go by sound and and look really to know when you're gonna have to reload your your roller because just like the brush it'll sound dry and then when it's dry you go get more paint I realize you might have the paint tray all the way over the other side of the room and you're going to be one inclined to just press and get more out of the roller but all you're going to do by doing that is you're going to give yourself like lines, fatty edges, we call them, that you're gonna, that's gonna not look good in the end. So I like to do half a wall at a time. See, now that my roller's loaded, it's going a lot faster. Okay, the wall's covered now. The wall's covered. My butt's not. So, now you have to, what's called, roll it off. So that is just long strokes, the whole length of the wall, to blend it all together. I happen to be an ambidextrous painter, so that helps. And just like that, you've painted a wall. Now do it four more times. No, three now more Now this times. is just to show that you can use either kind of brush. Previously, when I was talking about cutting in, I was using the sash brush or the angled brush. This is the regular flat brush, but the same principles apply. You put the paint on. Flatten out the brush, spread out the bristles, and then just cheat right into the corner. So there you go, guys. Just like that, you've painted a room. You know, the number one thing that most homeowners say they hate to do when you ask them about home projects is painting. I think it's because they think it's messy and a, and a pain. You have to do all the prep. Well, it can be messy. But if you follow the steps I showed you, get your tools together, do your prep, you're spackling, you're caulking, you're, any sanding you have to do. 
And then paint, it's really simple. Use good quality brushes, good quality rollers. Make sure you use that half inch roller. Good quality paint, it's really quite simple. So while you're stuck at home, paint a room. Start out small if you're not sure. Paint a hallway, paint an entryway or a bathroom. And then when you have the tips and techniques down, then tackle your living rooms, dining rooms, bedrooms. And next thing you know, your house is all spruced up and everybody will be happy. So all I have to do now is paint the trim. I do have to change the switches and the wall plates because we went from a brown tone to white tone. So now I have to change everything from ivory to white, but that's another project. And hey, maybe I'll even show you that too. So that's it for this one, guys. Go paint a room. So until I see you next time, remember, take care of yourself and your home. I'll talk to you soon.